Hello and welcome to Joey40,000 with me, Joey. And this is the first uh, 40k episode that I've done in quite a while. I've been without internet, I lost some Necrons, I was moving, model breakages, disaster. But I'm pleased to announce that I am back in full Necron Force. And yeah, I've done quite a bit in regards to painting and rebuilding. So lots of lost limbs in transit. They didn't really like the, the Devon to Kent move at all. So it's all gone, it's all gone well so far. Um, this episode is kind of a review of paints slash update on Necrons and just a painting guide for um, how to use the Minotaur tints because I was recently given some Minotaur paints to have a look to review to try out and test got two airbrushes no compressor so I can't use it yet um, but I'm predominantly very new at painting anyway and I'm a brush painter so that's what I've been going from and these are can be used for both they're very thin very watered down but I love them and if you've been watching these videos for quite a while now you'll know that I'm a little bit obsessed with washes and that they can pretty much fix a lot of problems that I have. Washes, dry brushing, that's how I paint. But the tints that they've got, ghost tints they're called, there's a, a full range and they pretty much work the same way um, as far as brush painting with them goes. So you can put them on as thinly or as thickly as you want. The thicker, the glossier finish that you get. Uh, if it's thin, you can just get them in the crevices and it's just a bit of a colour boost and you can just put them over as even a little bit of a glaze if you want to. Um, so they're very versatile and I love them. They're so good. So I can show you what I've done with the uh, colours on uh, black and red, obviously, Cithrons. Uh, on the Scarabs, I've just done a few of those up. So I'll show you an example of one, uh, which paints that I used and what it kind of looks like as a finish. I applied it relatively thickly on some of the limbs and stuff to give it a glossy finish. Um, and I've still got a little bit of highlighting to do, but as far as a demonstration goes, I'll show you a little bit on Colin the Cron.
Okay, so these are my scarabs so far. I'm going to maybe highlight the red a little bit further. But this is how the tints come out with a little bit of red, a little bit of highlighting on the edges. And they've kind of got a little bit of a sheen to them, but not overly so. No more than a wash would otherwise, with a lot of pooling in areas. Yeah, they, they've come out quite nicely. I think this is what I like about the Citron theme is that they're very red. Very red. But I want to get them a bit more glowy. So any any glowy tips would be great. Just on, you see, like on the, on the edges of the little leg things. Hmm? What do you think? Do you like them? Um, links to Badger down below where you can have a look at them in a tear range. Thank you, lovely Ken from Badger for shipping those over for me to mess around with. I've been taking them to my gaming club so other people can use them as well and test them out and use them on their models and they've been really highly rated. So I hear the same from Chung and Les as well. So they're, they're really good paints. And even if you're not really hot on using an airbrush, you can still brush, brush paint with them. They're just very thin. So not a drop is really wasted. And that is nothing but a good thing. The pots are a decent size. You don't have to use that much of it. And it's good practice really for beginner painters where layering is the goal and not slapping on as much paint as possible where you end up losing a lot of detail. So these are really handy because they force you to do things slowly because otherwise it ends up looking weird. And I've done it before to try and see how much I could really push it to getting a thicker coat on the first go. Um, the one thing I would say about the, the colors in general is that they're nice range, pretty good. But as a dry brusher, because they're so thin, it's, I found it difficult to use at first, but what I found was if you put a little drop on, on a plate or on your painting tray or whatever you're using, let it congeal a little bit, let it, let it harden and thicken up and then dab it in the edges and then you've got a bit more of a thicker consistency for the dry brushing and then dab as usual and proceed. But um, yeah, that's, that's my advice for the Minotaur paints as a brush painter. Uh, good to be back. Missed you all, and hopefully some more 40k updates very soon. If not, I'll try and get a battle report of an, someone else's game, and I'll just be commentating cheekily at the side. But like, if you like this, subscribe if you want to, and links to everything relevant down below. See you soon. Bye.